of life, a, sometimes a critique of the state, sometimes um, a critique of hierarchy in general, or, or sometimes I see it as a critique of control um, and, and, and forms of domination, especially those that travel under the name um, of uh, certain forms of, of, um, uh, of political liberalism. Um, so um, I'm, a, I'm a longtime reader of Emma Goldman, and I have every reason to affirm the radical and important links between anarchism and feminism. And I think the most recent work of Kathy Ferguson, the political... She's in the room. She's here today. Great. Fabulous. So Kathy's Kathy... in the house. <laughs> work is um, really, I think, the very best work we, um, we have on this That's topic. That's great. <laughs> and, um, so I'm, I, I follow her, I follow her. Uh, but let me just say this, that when, you know, if we wanted to say, hey, look, anarchy is against hierarchy and colonialism is one form of hierarchy, therefore anarchism is already against colonialism, we've done a certain kind of sleight of hand because it may be that there are forms and operations of hierarchy that are historically specific to colonialism, that we are under an obligation to analyze in their historical specificity and in their geographical specificity. Um, and that we can't just um, seek recourse to a kind of um, uh, in principle opposition to hierarchy to show that we've already taken care of the problem of colonialism. I don't think that's true. Mm. Okay, okay, thank you. Great. There's another friend here who's going to ask a question. He's just coming round. And. Uh, Okay. Hi, I'm a, I'm a student actually at Columbia uh, University in the Jewish Theological Seminary. Um, so I'm in an undergraduate joint you program. You've got a name as well, right? Um, and I'm sorry, my name is Sam Schumann. Okay. Good. Um, <laughs> um, and I've uh, been active with the Jewish LGBT group uh, on campus at Columbia. And uh, a major issue that, that surfaced this year was around the issue of, um, I guess, pinkwashing. Um, and there was a lot of internal division um, in, in the group about it. And um, <clears throat> I've also, I've read a good deal by um, Ayel Gross, um, I know who's affiliated with, a, as a, a law professor at the uh, University of Tel Aviv, and, and, um, and, ha and has written a great deal, as you were mentioning, at, I think at the end of your video, um, about sort of the, the positioning of um, LGBT rights in the, the Israeli-Palestinian discourse um, and, and, and sort of saying that, um, especially by Israeli politicians who have not historically been um, allies of necessarily even the LGBT uh, Israelis, um, of, of using uh, gay rights as a, a political platform and almost as a pawn um, in, in the discourse, um, which has been uh, quite worrisome to me. Um, but on the other hand, I, I feel frustrated when on the other side, um, um, I, I don't know, I, I remember um, recently there were certain um, statements that you made um, regarding, um, and even today, about, about queer rights and how it relates to this discourse. And to me, I, I feel like, why can't we just sort of take it out? Um, I feel like it somehow obfuscates the, the real issues, and it feels like it's almost a, um, can on the, even on the left, on the left can, can reproduce the problem of, of, of positioning um, uh, rights um, in a discourse that I don't, I'm, it to me is not apparent that it's actually related um, to the, the, the issues at hand. Um, so I would, I would really love if you'd be willing to address um, th those concerns. Thanks. Sam, when you say, why can't we just take it out? What's the it? I'm saying the day-to-day the -day problems and ongoing struggles that LGBT, both LGBT Israelis and Palestinians um, uh, face. Um, because I, I just, to me, it doesn't seem that, it seems like it obfuscates the, um, the, the, the political issues um, and I, even though it's obviously these are like of incredible imp importance to me um, as a queer person and as a queer advocate, I just feel that it 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 um, it, it sort of seems like a, a way to um, sideline or or, or somehow um, distract us um, from other issues. 
And the other issues would be, say, the occupation? The occupation, right, right, exactly. I see, okay, great. I got your question, I think. Right. Um, well, Sam, here's the, here's the problem. Um, when the Brand Israel campaign, for instance, decides that one way to uh, overcome the bad press that um, Israel has received by virtue of, say, the bombardment of civilians in Gaza or the ongoing occupation or other issues like that, when they decide that one way they want to advertise themselves is to, is to say, um, hey, you can come to Tel Aviv, it's a great gay, lesbian nightlife, you've got lots of freedom to express yourself, you have lots of mobility, fabulous clubs. Um, it seems to me that what they're, what they're basically saying is don't pay attention um, to that stuff about occupation and all the stuff that makes us look bad. Actually, we have a pretty decent human rights record on gay and lesbian um, human rights, and why not just pay attention to that and come? Don't don't listen to the boycott talk. Just come and enjoy. Uh, their freedoms here for you. Now, if we go, we go. Oh, great! Their freedoms in Tel Aviv for me. <laughs> it's like their freedoms for me that I'm celebrating, on the condition that I do not consider the freedoms that are being systematically denied to what are now millions of people who are either living under occupation or under siege, right? Including queer Palestinians um, who refuse to separate the issues. So one question is whether, whether gay and lesbians are being recruited for, um, uh, you know, it's called pinkwashing to whitewash the, um, the human rights record of, of Israel. And what, what does it mean for us to take that bait? Okay. Now, I would say, um, this is not just happening in Israel. We see this in Amsterdam, where the sudden, you know, full um, uh, national and state uh, advertisement of itself as a land of freedom and cultural tolerance depends on um, its progressive policies towards gays and lesbians. And then they use that in order to um, uh, halt the immigration of people from the Middle East or North Africa or from other countries um, that are considered undesirable, um, usually for completely other reasons. And we have to ask ourselves whether our very legitimate human rights struggle, and by the way, I'm still willing to use rights discourse, and I don't know how many people in the room there are willing to use rights discourse, but I was <clears throat> suggesting like today that there are ways of talking about rights that are actually that don't depend on states, right? And, and that I, I find that very interesting in some of the Palestinian political discourse as well. But, you know, yes, we have to struggle for our human rights, and we, I don't want to debunk human rights as a category, and I don't want to debunk, debunk sexual rights as a category. That struggle has to go on, but it makes no sense for that struggle to be a completely isolated struggle. We have to struggle for the rights of mobility and the rights of freedom for all subordinated and, and um, disenfranchised people. Otherwise, we become a very narrow, self um, self aggrandizing identity group and and one that doesn't care about broader issues of social justice and quite frankly it would break my heart if um, a radical queer movement that has always been about alliance and solidarity and social justice across the board were suddenly to become a narrow special interest group that doesn't really give a damn like how how our claims are used and and um, for what nefarious purposes doesn't mean we don't make those claims. It means we make them with other claims of social justice and in modes of solidarity. That's, I think it's the only, op the only option. Thank you. I appreciate your response. Thank you, Sam. Question here and there's one here. So we'll just take these last two. So please. Okay. Hi, I'm Wayne Price. I, I very much enjoyed your talk and agree with about everything, except for one item I want to ask about. Uh, I feel that like, like Yuri Gert, Gordon, uh, you don't really face up to the issue of national self-determination. That's uh, a disagreement I have with him, and it's why he spent a couple of pages denouncing me in his book. Uh, 
The, the question to me is, is really one of, one of freedom. Uh, freedom means the right to be wrong. That uh, we should support people even if they're doing something we don't necessarily agree with that and oppress people. In particular, we don't believe that the best thing for the Palestinians is to fight for a state of their own. But most of them or many of them do believe that. And the question here I'm saying is, should we nevertheless be in solidarity with them and support them for what they want without still saying what we believe, not denying what we believe, making it clear what we think, but still, if this is what they want, we should be in support of their right to have what they want as opposed to uh, the Israeli state. Thank you. Judith? Um, well, there are, there are at least there are three small points I want to make in, in response to this. Um, first of all, um, the right to self-determination on the part of Palestinians sometimes takes the form of national self-determination and sometimes does not. Um, it's very interesting if you look at some of the more, um, uh, the, the one state solution people, for instance, who um, uh, are calling for a secular state, for them national self-determination is not the crucial issue. Self-determination is, which involves enfranchisement and um, the establishment of a state that does not discriminate on the basis of religion, race, ethnicity, or any other category of that kind. Um, and then even those who do hold to national self-determination differ among themselves about whether that struggle is a struggle to establish a state. Um, and among those who say yes to the state, there are those who have, who have active disagreements about what kind of state structure it is. Um, so it seems to me that before, I worry about the way in which this get, gets framed. Palestinians want a state, anarchists are against the state. It's like, wait a minute, what Palestinians want is actually pretty well documented. And there's lots of good translations for those of us who don't um, read Arabic, um, um, and let's find out first what that field is and what is the political lexicon. Is self-determination always national, and if it's national, what's the meaning of the nation? If self-determination is linked to a state project, which state project? Arafat, Fayyad, the federal state, state project that was disbanded in 47, uh, or a new kind of federal project. Um, and and okay, so there, I, I just want, want us to learn before we assume that that's the way the opposition goes. Secondly, I think even uh, Uri Gordon and some others, um, Yossi Bartal among them, have argued that, look, the state can be a strategic move. It doesn't mean that it is the final goal of politics. Um, it doesn't mean that it should... Um, structure and control all modes of sociability and cohabitation, but um, it's very hard for, an, for, for any group to oppose a state when they have not yet had one. So to what extent do we understand the achievement of a state structure? We have to keep in mind that there are several ideas about state structure. To what extent can, can we understand that and even affirm that as a strategic, um, as a strategic move? And if it does turn out to be um, what Palestinians do want. It seems to me to be cultural hubris, if not a form of imperialism, to say you can't have what you want. I mean, that's what Israel is already doing with their elections. You know, they elect Hamas, and Israel says, oh, we don't recognize that. That, would, that didn't go the way we wanted it to go. <laughs> but it seems to me that, that, that a democratic struggle very often produces results that a lot of us don't like, and living with what we don't like and we didn't get a chance to choose is part of what it means to live together. I even say it's part of what it means, you know, Tai Yush. Uh, one last question, if you don't mind, Judith. No, I don't mind. That's good. <laughs> yeah, hi. Uh, my name is Julian, and yeah, I also want to thank you for... Um, oh, okay. sorry, go on. There's another question after this, actually, but yeah, go on, please. Okay, great. Yeah, uh, I also want to thank you. Um, so my question is, um, what do you see as the role of anarchists in the U.S. who are opposed not just to... Uh,